we're going to be doing finding roots of a quadratic function. Um, we're going to do this algebraically, so we're going to use factoring. Now, the first question is a multiple choice question. It says, what are the roots of the equation? x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. So we're going to need to factor this. Now, because we have a squared term, and there's three of them, we can use two sets of parentheses. So for this reason, I know my x's are going to be first because of the x squared. Now I need a pair of numbers that's going to add to give us negative 10 and multiply to give us 21. Now for 21, I got 7 and 3 and 1 and 21. Now I know that I'm not going to be able to get a 10 with 1 and 21. So 7 and 3 are probably going to be the numbers I'm going to choose. Now to get a negative 10 with 7 and 3, I know I'm going to have to have both these negative. So the last part of this is the zero product property. And that zero product property says that we need to have one of those x values equal zero to make the whole expression, I'm sorry, expression equation equal zero. So for that reason, you can set both these equal to zero, but you're probably thinking right now that, well, if something minus 7 has to equal 0, it has to be the opposite of it. So x has to be 7 um, or 3. Now, these are the roots. These are the roots here. Okay, we have to go one step farther with our factoring. So that means our answer is 3, 3 and 7. Now, for the second one, this is a part, I think it was a part 3 question. So it was a three-point question. Now, this one's a little different because not all of the terms are on the same side. Now, you always want to focus on getting everything on the same side as that x squared. So, like in this case, I have a 6 on the other side, so we're going to subtract it. Now, I can't combine that 6 with a variable, so what will happen is we'll have x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. So after that quick manipulation, we can go ahead and factor, again, two sets of parentheses, because we got three terms and the highest one's a squared. We have x and x. Now the two numbers we picked have to add to give us negative 1 and multiply to give us negative 6. So for 6, it's either going to be 3 or 2, 1 or 6. Now, because we have to get a 1, I know that this pair is not going to work. So 3 and 2 look like they're going to work. And if I want a negative one, and I've got a negative product, we're going to need one of them negative. And the one to make it a negative one will be a negative three. So for this, kind of like the last problem, x has to be three or negative two. So for this question, it was a three-point question. You get one point for doing rewriting your equation, a second point for factoring, and then a third point, the final point for showing your roots. So I hope this lesson helped you understand a little more about how to find roots algebraically. Um, there's also other ways that you can do it graphically, but if it does say algebraically, like with this question here, then you have to make sure that you follow the directions.